and there is a way. Well, it's a very good afternoon once again. Uh, quarter past two exactly. And as promised on the line, we have Connell Cruz from Johannesburg. Connell, how are you doing? Hey, Gary, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How's Joburg today? Hey, it's great. It's so warm today. Uh, yeah. We've been going through a bit of a cold patch, but today it's looking great. Same here. Same here. It's been raining like crazy. We had floods last week and now it's on its way back to summer. Yeah, I heard that. Crazy. Yeah, great. Cool. Absolutely crazy weather. Connell. You are making quite an impact on the the local Christian music scene, the worship scene. But but City of God is about all we know from you. So I wonder, should I get you to sing on the telephone for us? Mm, maybe not. No. Maybe not. There'll be, there'll be a song coming through about August that, that you guys can listen to all you like. Cool. I believe there's a new album or a, uh, a first it's album. It's going to be on a comp- compilation album, um, the I Shine compilation album that's being released by Integrity. Okay. We're going to have me and uh, Courtney Jonas and... Uh, another young lady named Shana Shana. it's just going to be um, uh, three songs from each of us going out to South Africa to uh, spread the iShine news great we're going to talk about iShine now now first of all I want to take you back way way back to just after you can start remembering you were four year old four years old yeah that's just after I can start remembering and you were sitting at the piano (laughs) (laughs) yes I couldn't even reach the pedals actually (laughs) where did your love for the piano come from oh um, I grew up in a house uh, my grandmother's house Uh and uh I mean, it's a beautiful, ancient place. It was one of the first houses in the area where she lives. And um, I mean, it has such a beautiful piano room. I mean, it's just filled with history and, and Spanish architecture <laughs> and all sorts of posters. And um, this beautiful Otterbach piano, I just mm-hmm. couldn't stop playing it. So, uh, I mean, it's just that, it's that smell, it's that feeling, it's, mm-hmm. that, it's the environment of the room. Um, and then, then you went for lessons and, and you got your grade eight, eh? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Awesome. Um, a couple of years ago, I got my grade eight from Trinity uh, Music. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Connell, tell me, classical music. Yeah. You have a love, obviously, for classical music. I mean, when you learn the piano, you learn classical music. What can you say to young people today about appreciation of classical music? Because a, a lot of young people don't see it as that cool, if I can put it that way. Yeah, that's right. And uh, I went through a stage where also I didn't think it was that cool. Uh, <laughs> if it wasn't for my mum, my grandmother just pushing on me and uh, making sure that I, I went through it, I probably would have given it up. But I've, I've come to realize just recently that music is this, we, we often think of it as a static, um, just going through phases, you know, kind of a block in history. We've mm-hmm. got techno, we've got pop, we've got rock. But uh, I've just come to appreciate more and more that music is this is this giant ball of, of a live musical energy that, that just changes over time and sometimes comes full circle. Some of the stuff mm. that we're listening to today is the stuff that Beethoven, Mozart, and Hayden wrote exactly. way back when. And uh, just to have an appreciation of it as it started, or at least uh, classically speaking, um, just mm-hmm. makes you really, makes your eyes pop out when you listen to stuff today. Mm. And you just recognize, ah, <laughs> that sounds familiar. <laughs> Isn't it amazing, too, that everything that's ever been written has just been written on those eight notes? <laughs> It's, awesome. it's, it's absolutely incredible. And you write as well, don't you? I do. I, I write some songs. Um, I write all, uh, all my own songs, and uh, uh-huh. two of them are going to be on this compilation album in August. Uh-huh. Connell, what's, what's your passion when it comes to songwriting? What, what, do you want, what, what is your message? You know, uh, Gary, until, uh, until about recently, it was all about inspiring people and uh, giving a message of hope and, mm. and love and, and teaching biblical truth. But really recently, I've just come across that the greatness of God and mm. His glory, His majesty, His awesomeness, His bigness, um, mm. everything He is, if I can just show that, if I can just point people to Him in my music, I think that's, uh, that's all I want to do with my songs. Mm-hmm. That's what Michael W. Smith has done, eh? For yeah, many years. Yeah, he does. Yeah, and he's a huge influence of mine. Yeah, I, I see that. Have you seen him? Have you met him? Never, not even not. once. <laughs> but I, I stalk his Facebook page every now and then. <laughs> Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. I want to ask you something about Facebook. Yeah? In the media release that we have, you said... Um, media, or not you said, but the, the statement says, media is the language of our time. Yeah. Central to kids and the emerging pop culture found in every sphere of life. Yeah. What is your feeling about social media, things like Twitter, Facebook, and, and the way young people are, are latching onto it? Obviously, it's a good thing. It's got its, its bad side yeah. as well. But what, what for you, what, what does social media and the whole internet explosion mean to you as a young artist? Look, I, it, just makes, it just makes everything quicker, you know. Um, what before took a, a week or a month or, or a year to get out, you know, a song or a, or a message or a thought, mm-hmm. now can take a, just a matter of seconds. Um, it's, a, it's a fast-paced world we live in. And mm-hmm. the changeover, 
that young people especially experience. I mean, one day they'll like this, and the next day they'll hate it and like something else. Yeah. Um, yeah, Facebook and Twitter, things like that, just make it quicker to happen. And I think uh, it keeps it keeps artists especially on their toes. You know, there's got to be a lot of give and take. Um, how much of me can I, I let out? How much do I want to keep to myself? Mm. I've just recently kind of come to a place with my social networking where I've I've had to draw the line between it being life or being social networking. Uh-huh. You know, trying to um, parade myself, my my personality, my life. There's got to be a limit, I think, on it. Mm. Um, otherwise, I'm just uh, I'm living a, a second life, you know. Uh, that, well, I, I think that's the problem with it as well. I mean, I'm on all of them as well, but there is that danger of of living that second life where you you almost become somebody else in in cyberspace. Yeah, absolutely, and, and uh, I mean, it's so easy to pretend, isn't it? Yeah. Just put on a face. I've, I've tried to uh, be a lot real, more real in, mm-hmm. uh, in my day-to-day interactions. Um, but having said that, Facebook and Twitter is just such an incredible place to meet people, um, mm-hmm. to network, to expand your horizons of friendship, of, of learning, of experiencing culture even. Um, yeah. it's, a, it's a real mixed bag of blessings and curses, I suppose. It is. But talking about being, being real, that's what you're striving for as well, as far as I understand in, in your songwriting. I mean, it's so easy to write a, a wishy-washy lyric that, that sounds nice and rhymes well, but ends up being, as you say, a mindless one-liner. Oh, absolutely. I, uh, I hate the cliché, you know. Mm. I, um, when I write music, uh, the music part, the chordal progressions and the scale passages of the arpeggio, that, that comes right away almost. Mm-hmm. Uh, the part I really struggle with is the, is the lyrics. The I mean, lyrics. It takes me forever. I, just, I can't settle for anything that's, that's just so mundane, you know. Mm-hmm. It's got to be real and, and packed with, with a meaning. I mean, uh, I really want to fuel that message of the glory and the greatness and the majesty, how awesome God is, mm. with uh, experiences from my life, you know, things yep. that I've been through, things that I've wrestled with, that, uh, that hopefully other people can relate to as well. And you've got you to be careful in a case like that, that it doesn't become about you type Absolutely. of thing. Absolutely, yeah, that's a challenge that's all the, the challenge. Yeah. Um, I'm, 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 uh, idols. <laughs> idols. Yeah. Talk to us about idols. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I went to idols last year. Um, I auditioned for season six. Mm-hmm. And uh, man, it was an experience. I won't lie. I don't think I'd ever do it again. Uh-huh. Um, but <laughs> famous last words, I suppose. But uh, it taught me a lot about this industry and uh, and especially how maybe reality TV works. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I made some great friends, Elvis and, and Lloyd and, and Jess as well, are good friends from from that time mm-hmm. and uh, I went pretty far I went to the top 30 which isn't so bad I suppose not bad at all so you really got your golden ticket uh, yeah yeah golden ticket I've still got it I, uh-huh. I thought about framing it but I thought that might be a loser thing to do yeah no <laughs> come on man do it. <laughs> that's a good memory <laughs> and what happened from there I mean obviously that was a stepping stone to, to where you are now it was not? it was it, uh, if anything it really motivated me I mm-hmm. think uh, just gave me a, a, an opportunity to to see that I might potentially be able to do this, you know, I might I might have it in me to to make to make this work. Because music, while it's always been a part of my life, it's never been something that I thought I could make a a focus, a ministry career out of. And, uh-huh. uh, I think Idols, if it did anything, it really just motivated me to think that's quite a possibility. And and I just maximized on it. I try to I try to make the most of the opportunity and uh, give glory to God and, and yeah. throughout it. And uh, from that, um, I got a lot of attention, which was great. And mm-hmm. eventually, Integrity noticed, and <laughs> which was even great. <laughs> and uh, eventually, Integrity signed me, which was the greatest. <laughs> and uh, and now it's, I mean, it's just been a year. I can't believe it. And so much has happened. Connell, is there a danger with, um, obviously, you're thrust into the limelight. Oh, by the way, the, you're on TV now as well. The, yeah. The, the One Gospel program on DSTV. Yeah, I am. Hosting it. Well done. It's the I Shine All Star Show. Awesome. Um, myself and Courtney, we present it every uh, Saturday. Uh huh. And uh, man, that was experience too, because I'd never done that before either. I'm sure. And uh, I mean, it's just such a such a fun thing, learning scripts and <laughs> saying stuff, <laughs> and, um, having to, uh, you know, if you make a mistake, you can just repeat it again. It's quite a difference from live performing and, mm-hmm. and reality TV. So, man, I'm just I've been blown away by the. Uh, the wonderful opportunities, the open doors the Lord's given me lately. And, uh, it's awesome. He's blessing you big time. <laughs> is, is, there, is there a danger? Because for a non-Christian to be thrust into the TV limelight and, and yeah. idols and the music and the, the CDs and all that sort of stuff, it's, it must be a, a, an amazing ego-boosting thing. But as, yeah. a, as a Christian, you're, 
your heart is different. You, I mean, you, you're humble. You, you want to serve God. You want to glorify God. But still, you get the adulation and all that sort oh. of stuff. How do you balance it? You know, Gary, I, uh, I mean, I'd be lying to you if I said the ego didn't uh, boost and the, mm-hmm. and the pride didn't flare up, even though I'm a Christian. Yeah. Um, I, I love attention. I'll be the first one to say that. And uh, I think uh, what's different for me is I've got wonderful friends, um, friends who, who hold me accountable, who, who pick up on me and make sure I'm, I'm on the right path and, and not falling off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've got wonderful friends who make sure my head's not getting too big, which kind of hurts sometimes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, they, have a, they have a wonderful, gentle way of being extremely forceful f- with me, but um, I'm very grateful for those friends because they keep me uh, on the path that I need to be on, the path that's, that's, that's getting things done, uh-huh. the path that's, that's focused on glorifying the Lord and, and, and making this work instead of the path that's just going to lay back and soak in the light, which is yeah. really temporary, I think. If it is. Honest. It will pass. Yeah. Wow. iShine. Tell me about iShine. Right. iShine, uh, it's, a, it's a great initiative. Um, it's very big in the States, and mm-hmm. Integrity is introducing it here in South Africa. It's a tween thing in the States, eh? It is yeah. a tween thing in the States, and uh, uh, we're, we're trying to make it a little bit more mature. We're, we're, uh, we're aiming it at teenagers. So mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's all... Um, Young focused. It's it's based on music mostly, um, music videos and interviews with young local Christian artists. Uh, that's what the TV show is anyway. And then in August uh, we're releasing a CD. That's uh, that's going to be a collection of the songs that speak to young people, uh, that speak to teenagers about who they are, where they are, and how to find their identity in Jesus. Mm-hmm. So that's the vision. That's the project. Um, it's supposed to encourage. Its hope is uh, that we'd encourage young people in South Africa to just shine for the Lord and uh, and live their life to the fullest to make the most of every opportunity for Jesus. Mm-hmm. Connell, you're very involved with the youth, not so? I am. I'm a, I'm a youth pastor at a church in uh, Glen Vista, uh-huh. uh, Baptist Church in the south of Joburg. So you deal with young people on a, a regular basis and those, those basis. questions, <laughs> the, the who am I questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, every week. And sometimes other questions. Um, uh, they're a great bunch of kids. Uh, I love teenagers. I was a teenager once. I think you were too, yeah? Of course, eh? Yeah. Just the other day. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, I think uh, it's such an important time. Um, yeah, it maybe is. we don't realize where we're in it and mm-hmm. we don't like to hear about this when we're in it, but it's such a, a defining time in, in a young person, in a person's life just mm. to figure out who they are who they're going to be it's a turning point okay let me put you on the spot there's a hypothetically speaking yeah. there, there's a young person listening to this interview right now yeah, a I teenager 15 16 years old yeah. their life is falling apart nobody loves them their parents don't understand them their friends uh, hurt them all the time and they they just think this is the end there's how can God be real how can he allow this in my life yeah. what would you say to them well uh there comes a time um, when we've got to start changing our thinking. Uh, we've got there's there's two viewpoints, there's two mindsets, there's two uh, voices, I suppose you could call it, in this world. The one is yours, um, combined and influenced by all the voices around you, your family, your friends, TV, magazines, whatever whatever it is you're hanging around. And if that voice is telling you you're not worth it, that you're useless, that you're not loved, that you're going nowhere. Uh, then I think you need to at least give the other voice an opportunity to state its case. And when I read the Bible, that's the voice I hear. I hear the voice of God saying He loves us dearly, proving His love for us time and time again all throughout history, sending His Son to die for us, to make a place for us in heaven, to be with Him forever. That's love. That's an outstretched hand of love and purpose and meaning that's open to you. And uh, if that person is listening, I'd say just go for it. I mean, there's nothing to lose, everything to gain. God's holding out his hand. That's what we get from the word. That's what we get from from himself. And uh, I think that's it's the, it's the best opportunity not to be missed. Amen. Thank you. Connell, one or two more questions. Sure, okay. Uh, City of God. Yeah. Tell us about the song and the collaboration with Cabello. How did that come about? <laughs> <laughs> you know, first of all, I'm so impressed, so happy that you guys are, are playing that. It's a... Uh, it's a song written about Joburg, and mm. I just love the fact that East London's playing it. <laughs> I'm really blessed by that. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a song written by a, a friend of mine named uh, Langa Mombani, mm-hmm. and he wrote it for a, a, a group called the We Will Worship Movement. It's uh, started amongst his people church in Johannesburg, and uh, it's spreading, I suppose, all throughout the country. Um, they're releasing an album also in August. That song's going to be on it. And 
it's just a, it's a movement for change. That's, that's directed towards young adults, um, more student type uh, in universities around the country. And it's, it's about loving our country, loving our cities, loving our God and loving the people in them, you know, mm. in those cities. And, uh, and City of God is a, is a beautiful song. It is. It. Awesome song. Um, it speaks a, a real heart about uh, blessing and giving and providing for the city that we're in. Uh-huh. And uh, uh, working with Cabela was great, although, a uh, funny story, if we can keep it between ourselves and okay. all your listeners. Just you I, and me. Actually, I never met him. <laughs> Not. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> I, uh, I came into the studio, I recorded my parts, and uh, he came in maybe a week or two later and, and recorded his. Mm-hmm. It's only later, um, through a, a mutual friend of ours, Gary Mark, uh, introduced me to him at Rayma. Sure. And uh, so during the song, I, I never met him at all. So you've never performed it live either <laughs> with him? Oh, uh, yes, that came later. Oh, okay. Um, okay. About uh, a month after we recorded it, we, hey. we did the concert at UJ, uh-huh. University of Johannesburg here in Joburg, and uh, he and I shared the stage together, and that was great. Great, I mean, man. Uh, he's such a down-to-earth, real guy. Mm-hmm. He loves the Lord, and he's just got, he's got such a fine-tuned to detail. Uh, we were just sitting in the back, um, the dressing room, before we had to go on. I was just, you know, I didn't know what to wear, actually. So I was <laughs> playing with uh, outfits, and uh, I put on this jacket. I was like, hey, what do you think? And he goes, bro, the jacket is in. <laughs> I was like, okay, all right, if you say so. It must be true. Connell, thank you so much. Listen, we're going to have to stop. I could carry on. There's so much to talk about, but maybe again, when the album comes out, we'll Absolutely. chat again. Yeah, okay. All the best. Any closing words? Message for East London? Um, yeah, I, I haven't been to East London yet, um, but I've uh, been to the Eastern Cape, and I love it there. Uh-huh. And it's such a great place, uh, such warm, friendly people. And uh, I, I'm really hoping to visit you guys soon. I hope that's part of the iShine tour at the end of the year. Cool. But uh, really great speaking to you, Gary. And, you too. Uh, bless you, man. And one, la- one last thing. Yeah. You're studying. You're studying theology, uh, theology at uh, BTC. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I, I believe there, there's a joint friend of the station. Uh, that's right. Uh, Mark, some, Mark Paul. Well, there we go. Yeah. Some clown called Mark Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Tell him we say hi. I will. I will. Be. <laughs> Connell, all the best. And you too, man. Thanks, man. Bless you. Bless you. Bye-bye. Bye. Connell Cruz. Awesome, awesome guy. And I see on the press release too, it says, if knowing God and enjoying Him forever is our highest calling, then that is what I want to sing and write about. Yes, City of God.